the presentation. Uh, so uh, my name is Maciej, uh, and I'm a co-founder of uh, User Feeds. Uh, as uh, User Feeds, uh, we work in the area of uh, attention economy and blockchains. Uh, and in this presentation, uh, which I titled Why Fake News Are Relevant, uh, I'm going to be talking about the User Feeds protocol, uh, which we kind of formalized recently uh, and specified it, uh, and build the implementation of and some apps on top of it. So um, this is the presentation which uh, is going to be divided into three parts. The first part is the uh, introduction to the protocol itself. It's going to be a little bit abstract, so please bear with me. And uh, the further we go into the presentation, it's going to become less abstract. And at the end, I'm going to show you the use cases and examples. It's, it's like uh, showing you the car at the end, but st st starting from the physics of the engine. So, so I'm, I'm starting from the physics uh, of the engine. Uh, as user feeds, uh, we explain ourselves, like, you know, we position what we do as a research and development in two areas. Uh, it's uh, economics of attention and information relevance, and that's the user feeds protocol. Uh, and the development, and in, uh, as a development, we, we develop the implementation of the protocol and already some example applications on top of it. Um, the problem of the attention allocation on the internet is uh, something that we start, like, th th that was the problem that uh, made us uh, start user feeds. And we started in... Uh, early 2017, like we actually we met with Greg, our co-founder, um, who's here today with us, you can ask him questions, he's right there. Um, we met in 2016 and we, uh, we were introduced to our common friend and we agreed that we want to work on this problem together. Uh, early 2017, we uh, secured the seed funding uh, and uh, in January, to, like, you know, one year after, this is where we are, and so we're going to give you a progress. We're going to show you what we've built and how we think about the problem of attention allocation on the internet and information relevance. The problem we're solving uh, is, is as follows. Basically, the early um, internet protocols are HTTP, SMTP, TCP IP, the protocols you use every day on the internet um, solve the problem of information transmission and reduce the cost of information transmission, uh, transmission on the internet to almost zero, but they didn't solve the problem of information relevance. How relevant is the information that the sender sends to the recipient? And this problem was solved by the application layer companies. One of them was Google, that is hosting us uh, today at Google Campus. Uh, and the, solving the, the solution to information relevance problem was very lucrative. As you know, companies like Google and Facebook and Amazon, they've, uh, every time you go to the internet, they show you what is relevant for you in the given moment that you're in. Um, and they make a lot of money doing this. So the problem we're trying to solve is the question, how this problem will be solved in this web 3.0 stack of blockchains, open data, and uh, decentralized protocols. Uh, but first, you have to ask yourself the question, what is relevant information? Is, how, how, you do, how do you define relevance? And this was the, our problem for entire 2017, as we were trying to explain what we mean by the attention economy, attention allocation problem. We were working on that. What is relevant information? How can you quantify and how can you precisely define it before you try to solve it? Uh, is your friend relevant? Is your mom relevant? Is, mom, is money relevant? Oh, the music. Sorry, I have to pause the video uh, because the music is being recorded all the time. Why are you not saying me? Telling me. Uh, um, so, and then we stumbled because, you know, all these things are relevant. Uh, but uh, we understand this intuitively, but we don't, when we have to define it precisely, uh, that we, we, most people have a problem, and we had. And then we stumbled upon this paper uh, by these three researchers, the information bottleneck method, uh, where they actually define relevance in a very precise quantitative terms. That was a big aha moment uh, and allow us to kind of formalize what we do and kind of push our thinking forward, like the, the, the protocol thinking forward. And basically what they say is like, you can define relevant information in a signal X as being the information that the signal provides about other signals. So basically, it's if a signal 
one signal allows you to predict other signal is it is relevant in that in that context and as examples they say like you know that, that is the information that face images provide provide you about names uh, or speech sounds provide you about words spoken and uh, the information bottleneck theory explains actually how, how the neural network, how the deep learning works. It's, it's basically what the neural networks try to tries to do is to compress the relevant information in the picture of a dog uh, and translate it uh, and, and, and try to predict uh, if it's a dog or it's a cat. But it's basically this information comp compression and it's all about predictability. And uh, the way we extrapolate this definition and this is our, like, you know, how we start to think about it, is that you can actually think about what's happening on the web as the same mechanism. The relevant information uh, is, uh, is the information in behaviors of people that allows you to predict other behaviors um, of other people. And this is what's actually, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna say, uh, tell you in a second what we mean by that. If somebody, if somebody is influential on Instagram, if they post a photo, they can generate sales. Um, your links or likes that you create on Facebook will be predictive what other people will like or click in the future. And this is what all these platforms are trying to do right now, is basically try to extract information, basically behaviors and evaluations of information provided by one group of people to predict, to predict uh, other behaviors. So, Increasing relevance and the question, the, re the, the meaning of relevance on the internet can be interpreted in this sense. It's all about searching for, for predictability. And in that sense, problems like um, fake news, digital addiction, uh, are natural consequences of that. Fake news are actually relevant in that sense because they are more predictive uh, of uh, behaviors and future actions than news you, you would consider that are non-fake. Uh, so, if you, and uh, th your impulse to pull out your phone and check your phone is just a sign that somebody found relevance in the system. Something is relevant because, you know, if you're addicted to something, this something is very relevant to you. And the system, the network, we're naturally optimized for that. So, uh, the, the problem of uh, fake news and trying to solve them by showing people what's, the, what's true and fact-checking, it's not the solution because um, fact-checking might be not relevant according to this definition. So how it all happens, and now it's, now it's, now it's the second part. So let's look at the different, uh, how this relevance is established. So relevance is established using um, a basic signal in every network, like the web had the link, Facebook then had the like, even in the financial networks, you have a purchase, you have a transaction. And every time you make this transaction, this is a single, that, that's a basic signal of evaluation. What, um, what, what then happens is like, what Google figured out is that they can compress, they can analyze, the, they can scrape the links on the web, basically evaluations people made, and compress this information into a search engine. And because this information was relevant, they will are able to predict that you're gonna click something even before you knew it, you, you're going to click something because there was relevance, there was, there was information in these links uh, that could be extracted and could predict future behaviors because all these links were behaviors. In the same way, this is what's happening with Facebook and uh, likes. Uh, you can take likes of your friends and because we're social animals, uh, you're going to predict, if your friends do something, uh, there, there is relevance hidden in this information. The same with purchases. People who are similar to you in their behaviors purchase something, it's very likely that you're gonna do the same thing, et cetera, et cetera. But the relevance that social media provides you is uh, something that we call vertical relevance. And this is the subjective relevance. The subjective relevance is basically, the, the, the best way to think about it is like, if you go to Facebook, everybody sees different thing. If you all guys would you know, switch uh, phones, you know, pass phones between each other, and you would look at Facebook, it would seem very strange to you because uh, the, the, the purpose of Facebook is to show everybody something different because you know, everybody has a different circle of friends, so they will respond to different things. So this relevance that uh, the, the, the Silicon Valley business model extracts is subjective. It's context dependent, it's individual, it's all about feeds, it's personalization. 
it's in space. It's so like the, your location in the graph matters because th this way these companies are extracting um, relevance from, from these networks. And the business model of the aggregator is basically like this. These are vertical relevance contexts like keywords or people. And you try to maximize this as many contexts as possible. That's why you have to collect more data because if you know that this person location, this person in this location, you have more information about them, you can provide them with, with uh, relevant information. And then as you personalize more and more and more, uh, you sell this relevance, you convert this relevance into money and into the stock price. Uh, but the problem that we have with pursuing more personalization in the system is that we lock everybody in their own personalized reality. It's like the, the push for, it's like, you know, we, you're starting with one person sees uh, blue uh, shoes and the other one sees green ones. Uh, but then, uh, then you have the news. Everybody gets their own reality because it doesn't matter if it's true or not because the system, as we said, is not about truth. It's about relevance. So whatever, whatever is relevant to you might be not relevant to somebody else. And then you provide them even more data within your personal context and you lock yourselves in and in into your own personal bubble. Uh, so, and then as the company can, con so, 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 the, so the, um, the situation we're in today is, is the natural conclusion with the fake news and the hate and uh, everything that we consider the negative uh, consequences of the internet, you can explain that it, it's, it's, the internet is working on, as intended. Everybody's optimizing for, uh, for relevance. But the interesting what's happening here uh, as you convert this vertical relevance into money and then into the stock price, uh, the stock market uh, can predict basically the, 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 the value of the stock and the cash, cash flow that uh, the company generates is basically a predictor uh, how efficiently the company will be able to extract this subjective relevance in the future. So how much more data they're going to collect and how much more personalized they're going to um, make uh, uh, these, uh, these subjective contexts. However, if you think what money is, and this is where it's getting, it's going to get strange for some of you, so please bear with me. Uh, this is just the model of the reality that might be useful or not, might be relevant or not. It's not like, I'm not saying you how things are. This, this model I'm presenting, it's, um, it's uh, maybe useful, maybe not. We think it's useful. Money is just horizontal relevance. Because what money allows you to do, the only reason you hold money in your pocket right now, you cannot consume it, you cannot do anything with it, but the only reason you hold it is that it allows you to, allow, to elicit predictable behaviors from other people. And with the subjective, if you have a subjective relevance in the pre previous context, if you are a celebrity in fashion, you can only elicit these behaviors from people in the same context. You can make the, the lipstick cell, or if you're a gamer, you can make game cell. So you can, you in, the, in, the, in this context, you have relevance, but what money allows you to do is you to have relevance across contexts. If you have money, this is, uh, money is a context independent relevance. Every one of us responds to that. Uh, that's why if you are relevant uh, in one vertical, you, and if you want to uh, take that influence outside of your vertical, you need to convert it into money and then you can influence other people. But fundamentally, it's uh, what's money, it's the graph, but we interpret it because we all agree on the meaning of this graph, uh, we also see the same thing. In the previous example, everybody sees uh, in the subjective context, everybody sees different things. With money, uh, we see the same thing. And we need someone to kind of help us see the same thing. And historically, it's been the financial system, and I'm calling this the Wall Street business model. The Wall Street it is basically like Silicon Valley provides us with subjective relevance. Wall Street is the objective relevance. We all see the same thing, and that's why we have a shared frame of reference, so we have the relevance. Uh, so we have this uh, illusion of money, but because everybody behaves as it is real, then it is real. It gives you impact on real behaviors. Uh, and the real breakthrough was the consensus algorithms that were pioneered by Bitcoin that allow us to, um, to have uh, 
this shared frame of reference, this objective relevance provided by the algorithm and the protocol rather than uh, the third party. Uh, and of course, money and assets are, um, are the, the application that we have in this area. So the, the problem is that right now, if you are creating these evaluations, if you create likes in the silo of Facebook, let's say, and once these likes are converted into money, into this uh, horizontal relevance of Wall Street business models, the information is lost along the way. So you are somewhere here because you have a bank account, and you are somewhere there because you have an account on Facebook. But uh, during the conversion that has to, the conversion uh, will always happen because we need a way of measuring this relevancy of all these contacts and convert them, but the, the information will be lost. Essentially, it will be lost in the database here and there because there is a third party. So the, once the information jumps from one graph to another, it's, it's lost. However, what's happening right now on the, on, the, on the bottom layer, as the money was previously a one very large uh, context, only the governments could produce them, now we're seeing uh, the explosion of this different uh, monetary uh, context, which are individual, uh, and uh, which will enable us to establish relevance uh, in this in this smaller horizontal context, because we, previously we can, we can only convert them to the, to the one, which is, uh, which is money. And each of them will be individually uh, evaluated by the market. And what's interesting about these things is that uh, if you hold money, you don't hold money because it's relevant for you right now, like, because it's uh, subjectively relevant to you, because you hold money because you want to influence other people in the future. So basically by, by buying an asset like this, if you buy Bitcoin, uh, it's different, even though the transaction can be similar to a like, you buy Bitcoin because you think it's gonna be horizontally relevant for others in the future. If you like a photo on Facebook, you reveal that it's relevant to you in your context because it's a baby of your friend. And that's relevant, but that's not relevant to any, anybody else who is outside of that uh, uh, circle of friends. So, uh, What's interesting with the tokenization, so what we're gonna see uh, is that all these individual, uh, like the concept of a digital gold, suddenly is tokenized into Bitcoin. The concept of, uh, uh, you know, the centralized computer Ethereum is tokenized into Ether. And, and people can now, uh, of course in the past they could like the Ether, ethereum.org website, or they could, uh, uh, follow the you know gold proponents on Twitter, but right now because this individual context uh, they get tokenized, they become horizontally re relevant. Uh, they can be suddenly evaluated on the marketplace, and they can be bought and sold. And what's what's very interesting here is that uh, in the same way that if you think of Tesla, Tesla right now is priced by the stock market. Uh, higher than um, Ford or the traditional auto manufacturers, even though today the traditional auto, uh, auto manufacturers, they sell more cars, but Tesla is selling less, but the expectations about the future of Tesla are way higher. So in that sense, the market prices, uh, kind of compresses exp expectation on the future and so much attention is being paid to Tesla today because of these expectations. And in the same way, what's gonna be happening with the tokens, uh, this relevance of tokens and these market mechanisms will allow us to uh, evaluate ideas on this temporal axis, because before we could only evaluate them with links and likes, which are signals, of course, but they, they lack this expectation component. Uh, but as we tokenize, as we have these tokens, like you know, we have Bitcoin, we have Ether, the question is, how are they gonna be personalized again? This is the problem. Personalized again in the sense that, you know, we now have consensus, uh, you know, we, we know there is Bitcoin, we know there is Ether, but how do these communities can, uh, you know, if you look at just the consensus layer, it's one and, ones and zeros, it's the basically machine consensus. But to kind of make sense uh, of the blockchain, you go to Reddit, Ethereum Reddit, Bitcoin Reddit, some other token project Reddit, uh, and this, uh, what you see there, it's again the, uh, it's, uh, 
it's uh, it's totally decoupled from the underlying layer. So basically, the the addresses, the entities, uh, the uh, the identities that are native to Reddit have nothing to do with the blockchain. Have nothing to do with this with this new horizontal context because it's it's a it's a separate server. They don't talk to each other. So with the uh, with the user feeds protocol, what we're doing is we introduce a uh, a message type, which is called the proof of evaluation, and which is the basic signal, uh, which can be used as a kind of unified and ba basic signal of relevance for the uh, web 3.0 networks, um, and can be used for both vertical and horizontal relevance, for both the subjective and objective context. In the, in the, all the existing transactions you already make, like you know, Bitcoin transaction or uh, an Ethereum transaction can be already interpreted as uh, the horizontal, as these are already evaluations. You can think of it as if you send uh, uh, Bitcoin from address A to address B, in our model, it's as if you evaluate, uh, it's as if you evaluate that uh, other address. Basically address A evaluates the address B with metadata C, which is like sent 10. Of course, in the consensus, it means that the message was sent, that, the, that the, we, we interpret in the consensually, we'll agree that we're gonna remove 10 from one address and pass it over to another. But it's also possible, using the user feeds protocol and its implementation, to have other interpretation of that message, uh, which are possible. And basically, because due to the uh, cryptocurrency boom, Everybody right now, uh, maybe not everybody, but more and more people take control, own private keys because they secure the cryptocurrency. So they have ledger wallets, hardware wallets, they have software wallets. Basically, they control keys with the cryptocurrency balances. And right now, they can sign transactions which are uh, token transfers. But using the user feeds protocol, they will be able to sign other messages as well. And these messages can be uh, likes, links, uh, upvotes, downvotes, but uh, because these messages will be signed, but because, because the node in this network will be this key, these messages can be then aggregated and evaluated in many different ways uh, using, the, using the protocol. So the protocol, uh, we look at it as, a, as this uh, you know, one message type, which is the proof of evaluation, and you know, all the existing blockchain transactions can be retroactively interpreted as proof of evaluation. So we can take all the, whatever is already on the blockchains, we can aggregate it and use them as proof of evaluation. So the messages can be published to any publication layer. They can be published to the blockchain, to IPFS, Amazon, or whatever publication layer there is. Uh, so that's the publication layer of the protocol. Then it's the aggregation layer where all these messages are aggregated or by the ranking and aggregation APIs. Then, then they can be ranked. There, there is the algorithm layer. Everybody can create the ranking to create a view for these messages. And at the end, there is the, oh, this, that's the display. That's, uh, I don't know why the dis display is missing, but that's the display layer. And on top is the evaluation layer, it's the observer. It's somebody who sees the output. You see something on the interface, and because you can only act on whatever you see, then you sign the message back. You, you make an evaluation of whatever you see, and you sign the message which goes back to the, the publication layer. And from the, if you look at, if we represented the same thing as graphs, at the bottom, so you can have the graph of evaluation from, the, from Amazon S3, from Ethereum, and from IPFS. And during the process of aggregation, we, you, the, the aggregation layer creates the graph because the nodes are, that's, that's in all of these cases, it's the same key. So you always know that the same person signed messages in all of them. And you can, so you can create, uh, you know, video applications, you can, you can create text applications, images, Instagrams of the web 3.0, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, you have token balances on the blockchain, so you can use these token balances as the source of scarcity for, uh, for ranking. And uh, because, the output of the observation and evaluation from one observer becomes an input to the evaluation of another observer. It, it's like 
it's, it's like an infinite game where whatever people are seeing, they, they, they evaluate and other people are looking, looking at it through their own algorithms. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's basically an infinite game. And the, the, because there is a scarce amount of observations in the system, all of us have finite attention. The question is what kind of algorithms you should use to, uh, to have the best view on the network. Because the consensus is just one. Consensus we already have, but the question is what algorithm you should use to look at the consensus layer combined with the, uh, you know, other sources of evaluations to get the best perspective on the, on the state of things. So the, the, the protocol is currently implemented. Uh, you know, we've built the implementation um, and we call it the user feeds relevance platform. It's essentially a platform which uh, can aggregate. Um, we, right now we aggregate the Ethereum blockchain and that's, uh, that's our one source that we're using, but we're gonna be integrating other, other blockchains um, and other sources. Potentially the platform can support anything. We aggregate it into one database and uh, we can run all sorts of algorithms on top. And then the output, then we open up the API, and so the interfaces can, um, interfaces can access this data. You can think of it as a blockchain explorer in which everybody can program. It's not a blockchain explorer, but you know, as a metaphor, you can think of it as a blockchain explorer where everybody can build a different uh, way of, of, of looking at this data. So, um, Today, so, so, so what this protocol really allows you to do is like, so today we have this uh, separate networks. We have uh, Facebook and likes and all these evaluations and links, the, the, the Silicon Valley business model, and we have the financial networks. You know, we have, we have the money. Money is closed and these guys are closed. And there is the, here are interactions where this information is changing hands. And like you, you convert your relevance in these vertical terms into money. What we think is going to happen is because now we can integrate financial networks and social networks into one network, uh, suddenly many things are possible. Uh, so it allows you to, do, to create uh, ranking algorithms that can arbitrarily combine uh, consensus with personalization. So what it, what it practically means, it allows you to create discovery algorithms that can take um, the balances that somebody has uh, and use token balances as a ranking for a feed or for advertising. Or uh, you don't have to use balances. You can use the information how long a certain account held a specific token um, and based your ranking, somebody's ranking on top of that. So it, it, it allows you to create this economy where all sorts of things can be built, uh, which is where, where money and links are, are, in the same, are in the same graph. And uh, I know this sounds very abstract, but this is the foundation. And I'm, I'm gonna show you the use cases which make this abstraction very tangible. So now we're gonna understand what, 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 I've, been, what I've been talking about uh, all the time. And suddenly, for some of you, if it didn't make sense up to this point, it should start making sense right now. So the first application we've built, and this is the application already built on top of the user feeds relevance platform. It's called the link exchange. We call it the Google AdSense for tokens. Basically, uh, you can use tokens. At every community that has a token today, right now if somebody wants to advertise this, com this community or uh, they can, uh, they have to go back into the fiat money, go to Google AdSense, pay with a credit card for ads, and drive traffic to the website. We think that basically these communities will have their own individual attention economies and they're gonna use their tokens uh, to basically pay the publishers and the advertisers, if they wanna use the token holders, uh, reach the token holders, they will have to use the token that the target community holds. Because right now all these guys have very competing incentives. Users don't want to see any ads. Uh, advertisers want to have cheap ads and publishers want to have expensive ads. And that's impossible uh, to combine uh, because everybody's pulling in a different direction. And, uh, and the link exchange kind of solves that. And we already run uh, the, 
the first experiment, uh, which is, has been very promising, and this is the this is Shepan Benton. He is for those of you who are watching this uh, on YouTube right now. He is the no, you know, I will let him introduce himself. He recorded the video for us, especially you know, especially for uh, this presentation. Hi, my name is Stepan Benton, and I'm a Polish Bitcoin, blockchain, cryptocurrency, smart contract YouTuber and influencer. And I do content mostly in Polish. And last year, I've created uh, my personal token, which is my own personal ARC20 token build on Ethereum and you can ask yourself what's the value of the token built by, by one person if you think about that like why the company which uh, has a, a team of people can have a token and one man don't don't can't have a token like everyone can have their own personal token and I believe that everyone who's trying to create a generate a public value on the market should have and will have a token like politician artists uh, sportsmen and influencer in many kinds they will have a token and i did it and i created a value it's it's worth like now about uh, 30 cents on polish exchange coin b.net and you can buy it for bitcoin ether and tr it's traded so uh, i be i build a community around it but what's the use case right this market is still emerging so the one of the greatest use case is just in front of the eyes so down there this here the banner here is made by link exchange guys from user feeds they created a, a widget which let which lets me display links paid by um, paid with benton coins you can buy an advice ad, uh, an ad you can buy a link displayed on every my weekly life with benton coins only with benton coins and you can buy it from the people who are watching the live so this is the new model of advertising when you're trying to get attention which are focused on my my content you can buy it uh, only with the, with the tokens bought from my community which is like a great example of a new models we create in this decentralized great world. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you guys for, from Link Exchange. See you. Yeah. So this is the dashboard. So we created an application. So the, the idea is that any token uh, can be used uh, via the Link Exchange uh, as a currency within the private advertising network of the token. So every token that exists on Ethereum today, this works on mainnet. This is already a functional uh, application. Uh, there is a link, linkexchange.io slash app slash Benton. Uh, this is a screenshot from this. You're gonna see these links. Uh, the payments go to a specific address. Our infrastructure, the rele relevance platform, aggregates these transactions. There is a ranking algorithm, which is very simple right now, which assigns scores to these links. So what you are looking at right now, uh, this is the window on the blockchain. Just personalized. This is not consensus. This is the personalization of the consensus. So this is like, you remember the abstract chart with the consensus on the horizontal axis and the personalization on the vertical one. What you are looking at right now is the combination of personalization and consensus. And Stepan further personalizes that on his live Facebook stream by showing these links in the banner. But showing the links in the banner is not the only way in which you can display these links. There is another way too. And uh, Patrick, a designer on our, on our team, uh, who is here today as well, uh, recorded this video to show you that Stepan doesn't have to, like, you know, we started with simple banners because this is the first approach, that you can display uh, mixed reality videos and mixed reality objects straight from the blockchain paid with the tokens. And Patrick and I'm designer here at UserFeeds, and the, the content you're seeing behind me is actually powered by Link Exchange. As you can see here, Except for my widget, each link has the same probability of, of being displayed. All I have to do is to approve them. It's content agnostic, so it could be anything. Object, video, GIF, page, and so on. 
it works pretty well and you can start using it you can start using it right now yeah so this is just a very rough example but uh, the 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 idea is as follows that instead of showing the links uh Stepan, these links are objects which are actually again transactions on the blockchain our infrastructure is recognizing them and showing it and rendering this in the, this is actually the link exchange widget which can be rendered in the video. So if ever Facebook says that you cannot have the banner on our player, you can go, the influencer can go inside the video and uh, you know, they can sell objects, they can sell, uh, you know, it can be a plane. So you can render a screen in here and, and, and display ads as well. So this enables basically a, a built-in monetization layer and economy for uh, augmented and mixed reality. And again, uh, it works uh, today on the Ethereum mainnet. Another thing, and this is in the uh, kind of design stage right now, um, what we're building again on top of user feeds as another uh, example is the social network for CryptoKitties. Uh, CryptoKitties has been a big phenomenon recently. Uh, people are trading and breeding cats on the on the um, on the blockchain. This is actually this these cats are the ERC721 um, token standard, a non-fungible token. Uh, what our infrastructure enables is uh, w w we are giving these cats voice. <laughs> uh, there, th you can sign messages, and uh, these messages, uh, basically, if you're a owner of the cat. Uh, and if you start, um, you know, in the protocol terminology, signing these proofs of evaluation, we can recognize that somebody who signed uh, a specific message, if they owned a specific cat as, at the specific time, uh, you can render a feed like this uh, for every specific cat. So actually, every cat can have a feed. Uh, and in, in addition to that, uh, oh, this is I'm going to show you how how it works. Um, so if you're a cat owner. Suddenly, you have a built-in Facebook for uh, you know, uh, for every cat, and there is uh, there is also actually uh, an advertising network also built into the uh, um, feed of every cat. You, you, you can sell you can sell links uh, on the feed in the same way as Shepan is selling uh, you know ads on his uh, on his feed. Yeah, so this is the this is the adwords this is the adwords uh, for cats again. Uh, be, because the infrastructure supports the Ethereum blockchain, this is already this is already uh, built in. And another integration, this is also coming up. State of the DApps, which is the aggregator for um, Ethereum application, we're going to be doing uh, integration with them uh, using Ether. You you will be able to if you're a, if you're a DApp in the catalog. Um, Using Ether, you'll be able to promote uh, applications. And we are thinking, uh, this is not confirmed yet, but, but one of the possibilities is that they will not collect this money. This will go to the Ethereum Foundation or other charity. Uh, so for every Ether sent to the charity, because they can recognize it happens on chain, it doesn't have to go to them, they will bump you up uh, in, um, in their own ranking. So, so this, is, this is also coming up. Any type of an interface can be can be integrated with them. And in each, each case, this is, again, the, the consensual relevance that is on-chain that doesn't mean anything is converted to the relevance in this particular context because there is a probability that somebody will click and act on it. Actually, I've heard from Stepan that uh, some of these advertisers that you saw already on the live feed, they were really happy with the campaign. They got conversions. So the full cycle of the advertising loop was closed. People bought his token, bought the ads, and got conversions on their site using his personal token. So uh, we think that uh, uh, this, is, this is the future. That the tokens will have their own closed like attention economies uh, based on protocols like that. Uh, I think time is up. Uh, so thank you very much. And uh, maybe we have time for questions, or the pizza is already here. One question. Really good question, uh, but I will be around so you can ask me more questions. Uh, or yeah, because the pizza is getting cold. Uh, so one one public questions and then pray plenty of uh, you know private questions uh, after after we finish. This is the microphone. So if you want to ask the question, show this uh, cube speaker cube to you. So who wants a speaker cube?
probably yeah, over there. No? No questions? Guys, come on. Nothing was interesting? Everything was clear? I, I know, I know, I know, I know. But, my, but maybe like, we can agree that you know, one question and then the pizza. Come on. Tomek. <laughs> OK, so after. After the pizza, you know, I'll be, I'll be around. Thanks again. Okay, so pizza time, and then we have two, uh, two more excellent talks tonight. So uh, let's make it uh, 17 minutes for pizza. <laughs>